All right, let's move to the next strategy. So next we're going to be looking at, I'll again go to event driven strategies first now. So when you're looking at event driven strategies, we're looking at something called merger arbitrage strategy. Let's understand this, this is very interesting. So when we are looking at a merger, there is an acquiring company and there is a target company. There is an acquiring company which is going to be acquire, which is going to be acquiring the target company. So Sun Pharma buying Randaxi, right? So there is a uh, Farm Easy acquiring Thyrocare. So Farm Easy is the acquiring company, Thyrocare is the acquired company or the target company. So there is an target company T fine now normally what happens is when you want to acquire a target company you always end up paying a higher than actual price because see if there is a listed target company in the market the price of that target company will increase when everybody is buying their shares when the acquiring company is trying to acquire controlling stake in the company the share prices would ideally increase and also if you are buying my company out I don't want to sell my livelihood, I don't want to sell my company until unless, unless I'm getting a premium to the valuation. Jitna value hai, utna mein kyon biku? Whatever is my value, why should I get sold off at that value? Then to I'm anyways doing good business and I'm continuing. The idea is that if you want my existence, again, there is a brand name, there is a company name, it all goes away when you're getting acquired. Normally. So if I want to get acquired, I would rather charge a premium and the acquiring company is generally negotiating because they are desperate to buy. Why are they desperate to buy? Because they want to expand fast. If I do the, if I lay down the factory and do the whole thing on my own, it is going to be a big problem. Like for example, ITC acquiring a Savlon brand. If they started from scratch creating a brand, brand recognition, brand value, instead of that, they spent money, they got the Savlon brand and they got the entire sales. Savlon itself, because of its name is selling in the market. And because of that, they were able to sell so much of these uh, sanitizers and all. This got acquired, I think, 2017, before COVID. Tell me, are you understanding the idea? So generally, the target is the one that is going to get overpaid, that is going to get a premium paid. So normally what happens is, be very attentive. Huh? So normally, your acquirer is here and target is here. There is a merger announcement. Now when a merger gets announced, acquire price might go down, target price might go up. Okay. Because acquiring company is going to overpay. Acquiring company will have a major change and everything. It is going to be paying maybe a huge cash to buy the target company. It will take time for the target company, acquire a company to, you know, merge, get comfortable, get rolling into regular business because this disrupts a lot of normal activity as well. Everybody is involved in the merger process. Everybody is involved in the company, the management and all in the merger acquisition process and acquiring company is paying extra price to buy target. Right now they may have, may have issues, but in the long term they will be becoming a bigger organization and they'll have synergies and all that, but that will happen in the long term. In the short term, the profits and all might get uh, affected. So normally what we see is that the acquiring company share prices decrease and target increases. Why? Now what happens is this is only when the merger has been announced. Now what happens, there are two situations. Mergers announced or there is a, not merger announced, but a merger is getting planned, there is a deal going on, there are discussions going on and all. So at that point of time, the market prices this in and acquiring company generally will fall, target company would generally increase. If the merger gets completed, if the merger is successful, then what will happen? Acquirer company will fall and target will increase. This is already happening. And
if merger fails then this announcement was of no use the acquiring company will go back to its previous value see when the announcement happens there is a possibility it might increase it may not increase there is a possibility merger may happen may not happen so that is why there is a slight decrease already happening if merger actually happens an actual increase takes place if merger does not happen then don't you think it will reverse back to its original value so therefore acquirer will what increase it will go back to its original value it had decreased on the announcement of merger on the planning of merger on the rumors news of merger if merger will not take place it will go back to its original higher value and target company is no longer getting acquired it will go down to its original low, higher uh, lower value so based on the announcement so if so basically the idea is that the merger is going to take place acquirer falls target increases but in the interim period when we are uncertain we don't know whether the merger is going to happen not going to happen what do we do so based on the expectations if the probability is very very strong then acquirer will fall down more and target will increase even more but if you are unsure so there will be a certain amount of movement if merger gets completed acquirer will fall down so if say for example because of merger if acquirer share price is supposed to fall by 20% let's say 10% then right now on the rumors and all it falls by 3 4% it will fall down by the other further 6 7% if the merger actually takes place if it does not take place it will again rise back 3 4% and go back to its original value are you understanding this yes or no merger arbitrage is a simple strategy where i am going to be looking at doing a if i think that yes the merger will get completed the merger will be successful in that case i'm going to acquire i'm going to do t plus in a minus we always buy what is going to increase and sell what is going to fall so we'll do a t plus and a minus comfortable simple easy tell me comfortable sure this is what we are going to do if the merger gets successful if the merger is successful and if we think that the merger will not happen the court will not allow there is something called anti competitive laws competition act in india as we call it so when you looking at these regulation maybe the government will not the uh, the uh, court will not allow the merger because then the company becomes too big and they might have a monopoly power so the government should not be allowing monopolies and all to uh, uh, in the, in 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 the markets and all right so when we are looking at that kind of a situation if we think that the merger is going to fail we can do a a plus t minus because if a is going to increase i want to buy that if t is going to fall i want to sell that this is merger arbitrage strategy for you tell me are you following this interesting most likelihood this is what we are going to do because here the change the movement is going to be more here the movement is very small and also we are basically going to bet whether merger will take place or not generally we bet on merger taking place generally we are going to be working on betting on merger taking place this is the merger arbitrage strategy tell me are you understanding and do you see that this is why is it categorized under a event driven strategy it is based on the event transpiring or not we are not looking at sector we are not looking at uh, um, uh, what do you say the pricing of the stocks and all that way we are looking at an event whether the merger will take place or not and when you are looking at h1 strategies it is not just finance you'll also have to look at the regulations because will the deal happen or not what is the pricing whether the negotiation will happen how the management is going to behave uh, whether the court is going to be allowing the merger to take place or not so a lot of factors are there tell me following this there's a series called billions uh, it's based on hedge fund so just you have if you have liked suits i think you might like billions after completing hedge funds you can try and watching that so once you've done alternate investments you'll understand that series better it's got about four seasons or so i think i've seen two billions it's good it's interesting of course it's not like what it is in real life because again they'll have to dramatize the whole thing in order to attract audience so this strategy will be same in case of both mergers and acquisitions yeah merger acquisitions on an average yeah like mergers like primarily mergers mergers yeah 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 oh thank you we are not differentiating between mergers and acquisitions right now second when we are looking at distressed or restructuring 
So obviously in distressed or restructuring, it is going to be again very simple. If there is a security overvalued, we sell. If it is a security undervalued, we buy. We have covered distressed securities in a brief manner when we are looking at private equity. A major difference, can you tell me what is the difference when we are looking at distressed securities being the distressed security investment being done by a P fund versus being done by a hedge fund. So distressed securities, I can categorize it under PE also and I can categorize it under hedge fund also. How will you look at the difference? Hedge fund is taking both uh, negative and positive. So hedge fund, so very good answer. Hedge fund can take both long and short. Private equity is going to be more of long only because private equity is more of investment. So I'm going to be investing private debt or private capital. I'm going to be investing if it is undervalued. If it is overvalued, I'll be doing nothing absolutely. So when I'm looking at private equity entering into distressed securities, it is going to be more of figuring out undervalued security. Also, if distressed security is being invested into by a PE, then it is a PE distressed security investment. If a hedge fund is investing into distressed security, it's a hedge fund PE invest, uh, hedge fund uh, distressed security investment. There is one more difference, a very important difference. I had told you this. In the, PE, in the PE class, private equity class. Private equity generally gets involved in the running of the company, the operations, the management and all. Hedge fund is not so much bothered. They are more about undervalued, overvalued, buy, sell, I don't want to run the business. Private equity generally gets involved into the running of business aspect. So this is a major difference when you're looking at hedge funds versus private equity. Hedge funds normally would not want involvement. Next one will have that. I'll come to it. So when you're looking at distressed securities again, we will want to invest in those undervalued and those overvalued. I already mentioned that at times we find and distressed security need not always be debt. It could be equity also in this point. Say suppose you feel that Vodafone share price, Vodafone idea share price is distressed at 6 rupees or so and you want to purchase and it becomes 10 plus. You think that, you know, uh, cafe coffee days prices or even its debt, the loan part is very distressed because people have become or reacted over pessimistically overreacted or, or it's not about overreaction also, maybe because supply increase because people don't want to take that kind of risk. Like if I'm a retail investor and if I'm looking at cafe coffee day, I don't want any part of it. Although I bought a, a little bit of amount in cafe coffee day invested, I think I mentioned that, you know, with this uh, some amount of PMS ke liye, uh, so that is different but otherwise personally I'm never going to be investing in coffee coffee day so are you understanding the idea so distressed securities restructuring and it is also possible you can have overvalued securities in the distressed segment say for example when the PNB scam happened and prices I think went down from 170 ish or so to approximately 100 110 and then it touched down to 70 I remember I had invested a little bit at 100, 110 or so and then again at 80, 80 or something like that. What if a hedge fund identified that 110 is overvalued for this particular counter and let me short sell it because it is overvalued, let it come down to 70. I'm not sure if I can categorize Punjab National Bank at that point of time as a distressed security or not. Tell me following this, but distressed security is overvalued and undervalued both. It could be distressed equity, distressed debt and all depending on the con and also it could be because you might want to invest because you think that the company is going to go into restructuring you think that jet airways is going to get bought by etihad and there'll be a good deal being struck out so therefore let me invest into jet or maybe you decided that no nothing is happening right now so when jet went bust so three years later now that jet is planning to resume operations between bombay delhi bombay delhi i think and a couple of more places now you think that yes the restructuring is complete the company is going to come back to operations the prices do not deserve x it deserves an x plus 20 percent or so there is a 20 percent to be made over here so let me invest into that security because i'm seeing restructuring happening i'm seeing all that uh, issues getting resolved salaries payments all of those things and therefore i want to invest so that is your distressed or restructuring related investment that is also an event where you expect a restructuring to happen where you expect a turnaround or something to happen with a distressed security or a company. Next is your activist shareholder. Activist shareholder is going to be where some where these guys are involved. So basically what happens is I'll give you a very good example which is I don't know if I can put it that way but very close to my heart. So when I'm looking at an activist shareholder basically a shareholder who gets involved 
who can influence decisions in the company is an activist shareholder. When I'm looking at an activist shareholder, obviously the shareholder will need to have a very, very large amount of stake in order to have that voting power, in order to be able to influence the company to that extent. Correct? Now, the example that I was going to take is ITC. For the last good four, five, seven years, four, five, six years or so, investors have been waiting that ITC uh, splits, demerges into FMCG, hotel, and or uh, and tobacco at least separate the tobacco business because tobacco business is very cash generating and fmcg and all is bringing down the profit levels and all of the tobacco business the moment that the stock itc splits it is possible that the 200 rupees dormant stock goes to a 400 rupees possible so if i am an activist shareholder i'll be a hedge fund i will try to buy a good stake in itc i will throw the management out or force them to split itc stocks so i want this is activist shareholder but even in this case you don't want to get into the management side it is just that you think that the company can take a couple of decisions and it can do much better or say for example the management is too emotionally attached to the company it is a founders driven company or so and you think that if this company is getting offers to be sold off to this xyz larger company so just because these people do not want to get acquired they're not doing it so you want to gain stake you want to influence the management and all that can i buy please you sell it to this p fund you're going to be a much in a much better position so you want to influence the decision maybe the management the restructuring or something like that you understanding or a, a, a split or a divestiture or something like that so activist shareholder where you want to take a gaining obviously you'll have to gain a good amount of stake in order to be able to dis influence the decision tell me comfortable next is your special situation so anything that is not going to get categorized under these major arbitrage distress activist shareholder is a part of special situation special situation could also include just a second let's say a divestiture spinning off repurchase etc what is the difference between this special situation and activist so let's say for example i want to influence that itc splits the uh, demerges so the itc demerger can be a part of this and this both if i buy a controlling stake to influence itc such that it does the demerger then that is this activist shareholder and if I think that ITC is automatically going to go for a demerger in next month without me influencing, I am nobody to influence, at that time I will invest in ITC, then that becomes a special situation. You are not the one who is influencing the decision. When the influencing decision comes in, then it is activist shareholder. Otherwise, if it is distress restructuring, this is a strategy. If it is merger uh, acquisition kind, it is this strategy. If you are influencing, then it is a strategy. Otherwise, for all the other events, it is all special situation. Others, this is all other factors, this other events, residual. No, but this is how will it be retail investor? Hedge fund is doing all this. You can also do. If you feel like ITC will demerge, you do. But that is your choice. But hedge fund is going to do these strategies. They are the ones who will start, who will understand the economy, who will try to see again. You are trying to forecast. You will try to figure out whether this company is going to be going for a demerger or not. This company is what kind of decisions the company will take. So you are trying to figure this out. Tell me, comfortable? The last one is relative value strategies. Relative value two A. So when I'm looking at a convertible arbitrage strategy, it is very, very interesting. So basically, suppose I'm looking at two securities, two securities of the same company. Suppose suppose I buy the convertible bond of a particular company and I short sell its stock. It's a convertible arbitrage strategy. In relative value strategy, basically we are going to be looking at the two securities, valuation of two securities. And if I feel that the pricing of these two securities is incorrect with respect to each other, in that case, I'll try to do a buying, selling, etc. Let me give you a very simple example. Suppose I'm looking at Tata Motors. Tata Motors has got two shares. There are two kinds of shares. One is with voting rights. One is with differential voting rights. 
so tata motors so shares can have differential voting rights for example my facebook share has one vote but mark zuckerberg same one share so if the company's all assets get sold off my one share will get the same amount of money his one share will get the same amount of money but my one facebook share will have one vote and his one facebook share will have 100 votes so there are companies which issue differential voting rights shares you have the share in terms of profits Financially, you have the same share, equitable share, equity, but with differential voting rights. Control is mm -hmm. You don't have the power. I mean, my share is worth 100 times more in terms of voting power. So Tata Motors also has regular equity shares and shares with differential voting rights. So I think that if Tata Motors normal share is trading at, let's say, 500 and the one with differential voting rights is trading at, let's say, 400, I think that 100 rupees gap is too much. I think it should be 420, 500. My objective is not whether 500 is expensive or 500 is low. My objective over here or my understanding over here is that the gap between this 400, 500 should be 100. Uh, should be 80. So either, so basically in that case, this 400 should be 420. This is cheaper. This is much cheaper than this one. So buy the cheaper one, sell the expensive one. Are you understanding the idea? So whether Tata Motors increases or Tata Motors decreases, both of them are going to increase, decrease. But my understanding is that the gap between them is 100 right now. It should reduce to 80. If both increase, this will increase more, this will increase less so that the gap is becoming 80 from 100. If both decrease, this will decrease less, this will decrease more so that the gap becomes 80. But look, if I have a... 500, 400, this is normal and this is DVR. Okay. My understanding is if this will increase, this will become 600, but this will become 520. If this will increase, if this will decrease, this might become 400, but this will become 320. So I am going to be buying this and selling this. Because if I buy this, I make a plus 120 profit. And if I sell this, I make a minus 100 loss. I get a 20. If I'm buying this, this makes, if I'm selling this, this makes a 100 profit. I'm buying this, this makes a 80 loss. I'm still getting a 20 profit. Provided the gap between them is narrowing. This gap is narrowing from 100 to 80. I am not betting whether Tata Motors is going to increase or decrease. I am betting that the gap between the normal share and the differential voting right share is going to reduce from 100 to 80. My bet is not on Tata Motors increasing or decreasing. Please understand that. Tell me, are you following this? So relative value strategies, these kind of strategies, I have not yet come to convertible arbitrage strategy yet. But are you understanding what is relative value strategy? This is the kind of strategy I'm looking for where I'm looking at the relative price of two instruments and I'm trying to capitalize, I'm trying to exploit the mispricing between the, in their differential. There is a mispricing in their differential. I don't even care about the mispricing of Tata Motor shares. I am care, bothered about the mispricing of their differential. Uh, of course, my bet, I mean, it is not a guaranteed profit. This 100 becoming 80 will give you profit. What if this 100 becomes 120? You will have a loss in either situation. Tell me, are you following this? So now we are looking at something called the convertible arbitrage strategy. In a convertible arbitrage strategy, what we are doing is, and again, please understand this arbitrage does not mean guaranteed profit. Hedge fund does not mean you are hedged against all risks. That is not the idea. Okay. Now, in a convertible arbitrage, what I do is I buy a convertible bond and I short sell a stock. I'm looking at the pricing differential. Let me explain. Give me some time. When I'm looking at convertible arbitrage strategy, it is of course on the same company's convertible bond and same company stocks. If a convertible bond is on, let's say, a Zomato, then stock is also of Zomato, right? Now what happens is I am a little unsure whether the company is going to do very well or whether the company is doing going to do quite bad. Now in this kind of a situation, what happens is if the company is going to do bad, Either the company is going to do very good or the company is going to do very bad. If the company does very good, very good, 
in that case i am getting my interest and all from bond this stock i am talking about a company in a very risky situation it's like a do or die the company might turn out to be might get out of the situation in a very good way or the company might actually get doomed in the situation so i'm looking at a company which is like in a very very a difficult spot of its industry the movement and all how it is happening let me think of an example वोडाफोन अभी तो बहुत खराब सिचुएशन वोडाफोन मे बी फोर थ्री फोर इयर्स बैक एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम आई वुड से दैट वोडाफोन वॉज इन दिस सिचुएशन वेर इट इज अ डू अ डाई सिचुएशन टाइप एयरटेल राइट ना हो नॉट श्योर आई एम नॉट बींग एबल टू थिंक ऑफ अ गुड कंपनी एट द मोमेंट एनी वेज सो इफ अ कंपनी डज वेरी वेल आई एम गेटिंग इंटरेस्ट फ्रॉम द बॉन्ड माई प्रिंसिपल इज ऑल्सो सेफ करेक्ट एंड द स्टॉक प्राइस विल इंक्रीज सिग्निफिकेंटली I will make a huge loss from stock. I have done stock price short sell, na? This is a huge loss because if the company prices go up significantly, this is a huge loss. I can convert the bond and square off this loss because it's a convertible bond. If the market goes very high, I'm anyways enjoying my interest. the bond price will also increase i can always convert the bond and square off my s minus short position this s minus would give me a huge amount of loss otherwise but this is kind of hedging that situation that position are you understanding if the company does very bad i will not convert and bond has the first priority bond will have the first priority on cash flow so if the company goes bankrupt the money and all that you get from selling of the assets and all is going to be first going to the bond i will not convert the bond because obviously the company is gone bust if the company is performing poorly the stock prices will go down and because stock prices will go down i am getting a profit from short selling the stock i am getting profit from s minus because i had short sold the stock so in this situation if the company goes bad i am still doing well because i am making profit from s minus so basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to look at the convertibility part of the bond you think that the convertible bond may there is embedded option you will study convertible bond in fixed income now but convertible bond is basically a bond that is you're allowed to convert it into stock if you want to at certain price at certain number like one bond may be convertible into two shares four shares so all those things we will see but the idea is you think that the convertibility option because the company is in like a do or die situation the company can be great or very bad in such kind of a situation maybe you think that the convertible bond also has that option embedded for buying the stock there is an option there is a choice that you can convert the bond into stock maybe that option is undervalued and that's why you want to buy convertible bond and you also want a situation where in either of the situation in this case you are able to at least convert it and square off your losses and in this situation you make money from s minus a huge amount of money also please think about it when a company's prices go down suppose a company has 100 asset debt 70 when the company prices when this a starts going down when the asset value starts going down suppose the company is doing very bad first you will get 30 profit from s minus assume there is only one stock and one stock is equal to 30 rupees just just assume right now then you will start making loss from this debt has a first priority right so if this 100 gets sold off first he will get the entire 70 then this guy will be making loss so if asset value is 80 debt nothing happens equity gets 20 faida 20 profit because you short sold you did s minus if the loss is 40 if asset becomes 60 there is a total loss of 40 First thirty loss will be borne by equity. That is your profit, and then ten loss will go over here. You will have to bear a loss of ten. Are you understanding this? So you cannot do. We will not be able to do an exact numerical right now. But you are understanding the idea, because you will have to learn how to do convertible bond valuations, option pricing, equity pricing. A lot of things have to be learned. But are you getting a basic idea that in a convertible bond and doing an S minus? and if i'm so scared of doing a short sell or uh, you know with these i can combine with put option of stock or something like that we will we'll not be able to cover that right now you can combine with derivatives you can obviously modify your position and make it even better you can always refine your position and your bet 
but this is broadly your convertible arbitrage strategy you don't have any numerical or questions or anything on this but you have to understand i mean you have to understand the basics very well tell me getting the idea understanding this which is next one tell me converting the bond to a stock we get the principal amount back convertible the, uh, converting the bond to stock you'll not get the principal back but you'll not convert all the bonds you'll convert only the amount that is needed for s minus and you will not do like a 100 rupees bond plus and 100 rupees stock minus we don't do it the proportion all will vary so all that depends on how many shares is the convertible bond converted convertible into ha huh. next kya asset back so business. asset back fixed income securities so asset back securities a full chapter in fixed income when we study asset securitization and all so basically what we are seeing over here is that even in asset back securities mortgage back securities there are varieties mortgage back securities are basically backed by home loans just understand so suppose the bank is giving a lot of home loans and you are investing into those bonds on the basis of those home loans you'll have to do mbs and abs to understand this first so basically we are trying to capitalize on the opportunity between uh, mispricing between abs and mbs so say for example one mbs is overvalued one abs is undervalued undervalued by overvalued sell that is what we are doing with mbs abs securities there is there is no other thing that we can cover right now with abs and mbs once you cover abs mbs chapter this will be fine so mortgage back securities and all again you know uh, you'll you'll study something called tranching in abs mbs chapter so once you do the tranching or those who in case you have already completed tranching and all of that you'll understand that there are different kinds of tranches we create junior senior uh, uh, tranches and also you are looking at the mispricing between those tranches and all and we'll try to capitalize on that that is your mbs abs based fixed income arbitrage strategy again the premise is similar undervalued overvalued of related security i don't want to bet i don't care about tata motors increasing or decreasing i am bothered about the pricing differential i don't care about the company doing good or bad i am bothered about the pricing differential next one is general fix person. general fixed income arbitrage strategy is say suppose uh when you're looking at fixed income securities they have gradings or credit ratings so there could be a triple a rated bond there is an a rated bond triple b rated bond double b rated bond depending so when you're looking at this chrysalicra kind of agencies in india or moody's snp etc agencies when you're looking at it globally so when you're looking at these agencies they give a uh, credit rating to these bonds and all when you're looking at these credit ratings to the bonds what happens is there are companies which will get good credit ratings there are companies which will get poor credit ratings now what happens is normally triple a double a a triple b they are so good that ideally we would be expecting that you know possibility of default is almost negligible now what you do is you end up let's say triple a rated bond is giving you a return of let's say 2.3% 2.75% what you will do is you will borrow the triple a rated bond that is short sell the bond you will borrow at this rate and you will invest at this rate you will borrow at 2.3% rate and you will invest at 2.75% rate obviously in regular economy and all it will be very fine very much okay because ideally we don't expect any of these bonds to be defaulting when you study credit rating you will realize that triple b rated and above is called investment grade bonds and triple b rated below is called speculative grade bonds these are covered in fixed income don't worry but we are trying to take advantage of this we think that triple a rated bond is overpriced so i want to sell this relative again relative we are not betting whether interest rate will go up or go down our bet is that if interest rate goes up if interest rate goes up this will go down more and this will go down less we are expecting if interest rate goes down this will go up more this will go up less so you are basically not betting on the economy and all you are basically betting on the difference differential between these two securities again there is no guaranteed security what if triple b becomes more risky there is a higher probability of default ultimately that is what the credit rating is about right triple a rating a very high rating means that i don't think this company can default triple b rating means that there is a slighter probability at least of default but what if the economy does does bad there are a lot of bankruptcies and all happening in the economy markets have become pessimistic now what will happen triple b rated bond will go down a very very large extent because everybody will do flight to safety because now this is seeming very risky triple b is not good anymore 
although triple B is a very good rating. But now let's say I don't expect these to be doing very well because the markets have become suddenly in a very, very pessimistic zone. There is a crash in the market, stock market or something. Everybody wants to go to buy securities which are uh, safer. So in this case, your strategy backfires. In normal markets, your strategy was working well. You're selling AAA bond. You're borrowing money at 2.3%. You're investing in triple B bond. You're uh, getting a return of 2.75%. And obviously, for this 0.45%, you'll have to invest a huge amount of money in order to gain that exposure. Also, if you understand, this is a leveraged investment. It is leveraged, now. You're selling this bond and buying this bond. You're borrowing at this rate and you're lending at this rate. Your investment is very small. So this automatically becomes a leveraged investment. Tell me, are you following this? Getting the idea? So this is fixed income arbitrage. Again, when you're looking at relative valuation of two different securities, and you're kind of capitalizing on the mispricing. These are not guaranteed strategies. If you want, you write down not guaranteed strategies. Do not produce guaranteed returns. Arbitrage does not mean guaranteed returns because arbitrage actually means guaranteed returns. Arbitrage means risk-free returns. When you study arbitrage, speculation and all of that, derivatives, we cover that part. But here, arbitrage does not mean guaranteed return. It is termed that way, fixed income arbitrage. We are trying to capitalize between the mispricing provided our expected mispricing is correct. The market does not turn into some extreme which we do not understand, which we did not anticipate, which we did not fathom, think about, imagine, assume. <laughs> Getting the idea. Tell me, is it okay to lay Next, what is it? Volatility. Volatility. So, volatility basically, again, you use something called options to trade on volatility strategies. So, volatility strategies are, so for the time being, if you just want to write, if you expect volatility to be high, you do plus options. If you expect volatility to be low, you do minus options. So there are a lot of options and there are a lot of volatility based strategies you can execute. So maybe a hedge fund which is focusing on not whether the market is going up or going down, but whether you expect the markets to be this way or whether you expect markets to be this way. So what is your expectation about the volatility? You are not betting on the direction. You're betting on the riskiness, whether you think that the markets are going to be more, uh, you know, they're going to be sta uh, stable, they're going to be settling down, or do you expect the markets to become too volatile? And how to trade on these volatility and all these strategies, this though you learn even later after options you learn. So using option, option strategies, then you will get to learn these things. So how to utilize, how to capitalize on volatility. This you'll not learn right now. Is this at all option with the underline is a credit spread? You have to understand credit spread option, option strategies, straddle, strangle, all these things we use. You're not learn right now. That is after completing options, we use option strategies in order to bet on volatility. It'll take time. You'll have to wait for this. Maybe next level. Okay, so that is volatility based strategy. Volatility is not betting on direction. Volatility strategy is betting on whether it's going to be more risky, less risky. And there are certain securities also which have volatility inbuilt. Like option prices are based on volatility. So when you do derivatives, you'll understand that. That option prices depend on volatility. Convertible bond also has an option. You have an option, you can convert it into stock. So there are different ways in which you can bet on volatility. Anyways, just leave it to that. You don't need anything more than that right now. And then there is multi-strategy. Multi-strategy is basically anything that does not fall into this. Like here we talked about MBSs, ABSs, we talked about convertible bond, asset backed and mortgage backed security, we talked about A rated, B rated bonds, we are talking about options and all to be used for volatility trading. So other than that also there are a lot of securities wherein you could try to, let's say for example if I want to capitalize on gold versus silver pricing, plus gold minus silver or something like that. I think there is a relative difference between gold and silver or gold and nifty. I want to do a multi strategy, I want to do a multi asset class, I want to use a commodity and an equity because I know a relationship exists between gold versus nifty. So I'm tracking how gold to nifty ratio is moving over the t over time. And I think that the gold is uh, a very undervalued compared to what nifty is today. And therefore, I think I want to buy gold and sell nifty. I'm betting on the relationship, let's say. So there are different asset classes, different kinds of securities and all. And you want to exploit the relative pricing, the relative differential between those into your strategy. It could be variety. It's very open ended. When you're looking at hedge fund strategies and all, it is very, very open ended. No rest, very low restrictions. I, sh I shouldn't be saying no restriction. I should be saying more of low restrictions and all. Tell me, comfortable till here. Understanding this, interesting. This completes your hedge fund strategies part for now.